Hey there everybody, my name is Keno and welcome back to Butte Bandit's Expansion Franchise Mode series here on the channel. Now, that last episode uh, had me more angry than I think this game has gotten me in a long time. Uh, I used to get angry with this game when I would uh, play Be a Pro. I'd get angry pretty frequently with that. And so I got, I got a little heated, okay? I got a little heated. I don't know what the secret metric is that EA NHL uses in their games to make good teams do bad and bad teams do good or to make certain chemistries not work. I don't know all the things that work uh, behind the scenes in this game, but I'm frustrated. And I, I was very frustrated in the last video and I wanna quickly say I'm sorry. Okay, I'm sorry for getting so bent out of shape. I'm sorry for losing my mind. It's gonna happen more, okay? This channel just started like a month and a, a month and a bit ago. I'm gonna get angrier. There's gonna be more angry moments, okay? Especially as these series goes longer. Like this one is going on, uh, I believe, part 20 now. Yeah, 20 parts, okay? And if you guys don't know, it takes me about 30 to 40 minutes to record an episode unless it's a player off episode. Sometimes up to an hour to record an episode. So that's like 20 freaking hours max that I've put into just this series. And to watch this team consistently fail, you can already hear it, the anger's coming back. But I'm gonna use that anger to restructure this team, okay? We've gone a few seasons with this team. It hasn't worked yet. Uh, we made a restructuring last season. I think that was a good idea. We're going into the Stanley Cup Finals here. We're going to sim through it. It's the Ducks versus the Rangers. I think we have we have some moves to make this offseason, and I'm going to get them done in this video. And then probably the next video, we'll see what happens uh, with free agency and probably making moves there too. The Rangers take a 1-0 series lead in the Stanley Cup Finals. It's tied up with the Ducks now. Let's see, game three, the Rangers take game three, game four, the Rangers take game four, and do the Rangers win the cup in five? They do, they are your Stanley Cup champions for 2027, beating the Ducks in five. So if we couldn't even get past the Ducks, if we couldn't even win against the Ducks, imagine how we would have done the, against the Rangers had we gotten by. And it almost was a queen sweep, it was almost the Ducks and the Gulls, but instead it's the Rangers and the Gulls. Unfortunate for the Anaheim Ducks organization, but hey, they made it to the Stanley Cup final. They gotta be happy with that. If history repeats itself, then like six, seven years from now, they'll win the cup. But salary cap is now set at 97 million and we have the draft lottery coming up. I honestly forgot about something. I forgot about something. At the uh, Brandon Montour trade episode, we acquired Simon Edvinson, Axel Sandin Pelica, Michael Rasmussen, a first round pick in the 2026 draft, and a first round pick in the 2027 draft from the Detroit Red Wings. And if we look, the Rangers were the number one team in the NHL, so it kind of makes sense that they, they broke the curse and they won the cup. And then the, uh, the Oilers were right there. But where's the Detroit Red Wings? Did they make the playoffs? They did not. Okay, so where are they? Where are they? They were the third worst team in the NHL. Okay, so with Brandon Montour on the team, they tanked. They went off a cliff. We have the ability to possibly get, we're almost guaranteed, we're guaranteed a top five pick here. We do have the ability to get to the conference finals and possibly walk away with the first overall pick here. And that is just mind boggling to me to think about. Okay, I didn't even think that that was a possibility. I'm sorry if I sound a little quiet, hopefully I can fix that, but we're going here into the draft lottery, let's see what happens. We're gonna sim to it quickly. I'm not gonna do it day by day, but that's gonna take forever. Hopefully my scouts were set up. Holy crap, it happened. We jump with our pick from the Detroit Red Wings from third to first, and your Butte Bandits have another first overall pick. Minnesota jumps from sixth to second, Pittsburgh falls from first to third, and Seattle falls from second to fourth. Los Angeles rounding out the top five, falling from fourth to fifth. Guys, we have two first round picks and one of them is the first overall pick. We are ready to go here. We are ready to go. That's 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 a much more positive note. That's a much more positive note for us, okay? I didn't expect that. Did you guys expect that? I didn't expect that. I didn't expect that. Let's see who's available though in this draft. And well, it's a lot of left wingers. It's a lot of left wingers. Robert Tarnstrom uh, slated to go first overall. Justice Chang second overall. Ali Stock, a medium elite gem, a sniper, selected to go third overall. Our scouts have him as the possible second overall, and Tarnstrom as the possible third overall pick. 
So maybe Chang or Brodziak would be first. Uh, but yes, uh, Tyson Brodziak, 6'4", left defender, slated to go fourth, and Davis Koop at fifth. Then you got players like Owen Hayes, who looks pretty damn good. Uh, Elliot Dangno. Oh, those individual attributes are looking pretty good. He's he, he's Alexander Steen comparison NHL ready player. Very interesting. Landon Dupont, uh, a possible medium elite gem defender. Um, Bogdan Vasilevsky, Noah Stenlin. There's some there's some pretty good players here. Darren Barahowski, Pavel Laine, Alexis Joseph, Jacob Schwartz. There's some pretty damn good players here. Some pretty good players here available at this draft. And we have the first overall pick. So maybe we'll go off the board again. We went off the board in the Cooper Appleby selection and look how that panned out. 90 goals in his first two seasons combined. Let's see who retired. I don't think we had anyone who was in uh, fear of retiring. Blake Wheeler with the Florida Panthers retires. Uh, Ryan O'Reilly with the Nashville Predators. Logan Couture with the Boston Bruins. Corey Perry finally retires. Eric Carlson with the Anaheim Ducks. So he wins a cup. Uh, did he even play for the team this season? Was he a trade deadline acquisition that never played for the Ducks? Aside from Eric Carlson, Josh Bailey retires with the Canes. Uh, TJ Oshie retires with the Lightning. Pacioretty with the Kings. And Jordan Stahl with the Lightning as well. So quite a few notable big names uh, from my growing up that have retired now. But it's a new wave. New wave of the NHL. And we're going to have a new wave of the big band that's coming up right here. Uh, we know who's in the draft class. We know where we're picking. We're almost ready to go. But I want to take a quick look and see if there's a trade that I can make to restructure this team because i said i said in the last video that this team will not be the same one going into next season okay We're, we might even do a a, a a jersey customization a logo change everything like that if we can we're going in to the next season as a new team let me see what i can do with this team okay and the first trade is set up i'm not sure if it'll go through i haven't really tested it but it's a big one the original face of the franchise brett pesci He's now 32 years old. He's got two more years left on his contract after once this season fully uh, ends. He's been great for us. He's a great defensive presence. I think it's time to let him go. We've been playing him limited minutes anyways, only 16, uh, only around 17 minutes a night this season. We're also moving on from Peyton Krebs because you know what? He's decent. We got him signed to two more years at 3.75 million, but I think we can, we can do better. Plus Benjamin Gleason and a second to the Dallas Stars for the player, one of the defensemen I was originally going to grab last year in the Brandon Montour trade and Leon Bichel. He brings back that defensive capabilities that we're losing with uh, Brett Pesci. He's only listed as a top six defender. He could jump to a top four, but it wouldn't bother me too much. He's got great physical category. His skating could uh, use some work. I don't need him for his senses or his puck skills, really. So that doesn't matter. I just need a defensive third pairing defenseman. And that's where Leon Bichel fits in perfectly. And the other big name is Logan Stankoven, okay? High top six, 24 year old, center left wing. He's had 58 points in 82 games this season. He's done great. His individual attributes are insane. He's got a great aggressiveness, decent, uh, really good speed actually, a pretty decent defensive category. His senses are insane, 99 discipline. His puck skills are great and he's got a great shot. He's a well-rounded, perfect, middle six uh, top six forward he's a perfect top six forward for us we're also throwing in taylor hall to make the caps work and we're hoping to get the 19th overall pick in this year's draft plus the 118th pick i don't really mind if we don't get the 118th pick that's more of a uh just a safety net type thing but let's see this is a big trade this is a big trade another right-handed defenseman traded in the offseason to hopefully structure this team up better especially for long term let's see does this go through it doesn't, but it just needs a slight touch. So you know what? Instead of removing that fourth, I'm going to add a seventh. That should get it done. And it does. So Brett Pesci, I'm sorry, but it's time to move on. You could have retired with the team. It didn't feel right. You are off to the Dallas Stars. And we bring in Logan Stankoven and Leanne Bichel as the main two pieces, plus the 19th overall, 19th overall pick. So now we have the first, 19th, and 31st pick in this NHL entry draft. If that's not enough to stock the cupboards, I don't know what is, but guess what? I'm not done yet. I'm not done yet. I said I was angry, didn't I? Let me make another trade here. Okay, and the next trade here, kind of had to, had to expect it. Philip Gustafson and Jack Thompson to the Pittsburgh Penguins for the 34th and 38th overall pick in this year's NHL entry draft. Now, Gustafson, unfortunately, just... He, he's found himself too far down on the depth chart. 
Grobble had a rocky season this season, but he started to come around. Trey Augustine looks like a dependable goaltender. Both of them are 22. Gustafson's 29 now. He's almost on the wrong side of 30. He's got four more years at 5.75 million. If anything, we're just moving him to free up the cap space. And maybe we'll make the Penguins better. Maybe Gustafson will bounce back. Or maybe, 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 maybe he just wasn't it. But it's going to be Gustafson and Thompson for two second round picks. Both of them really high. So pretty much low first round picks. Let's see. Does this go through? It does. The Pittsburgh Penguins now are happy to be the owners of Philip Gustafson's contract. And, well, Jack Thompson was never going to find himself in the lineup. It just, it wasn't working. He wasn't there. And guess what? I'm still not done. We're making another trade. Okay, and another blockbuster trade coming right up. Keandre Miller, who I absolutely love, absolutely love, but we're not giving him the minutes that he needs. He did great for us this season. We just can't give him the minutes he needs. And, well, we got rid of his defensive partner. So, Keandre Miller, Pierre-Luc Dubois, who is now... He's done great for us, 65 points in 82 games, but he's now this is the third line scoring forward, and I want to get out from under that $8.3 million contract as fast as I possibly can. Plus, prospect Zanetti and Ryder Ritchie, who we did get last year in one of the trades we made, plus the 31st overall pick for defenseman Ervin Kiviharju, who's got 29 points in 82 games this season. Look at his individual attributes. They're all stellar. They're all insane. Sasha Boumedian, who is a prospect who's probably ready for next season, so that's going to be great. Andrew Cristal, who I think if we give him the proper opportunity to develop, will be dynamite for us. He's more. He's going to be definitely like a shoot first, ask questions later type of forward. Uh, his shot category needs a little bit of help, and, and his physical and defensive categories are nowhere to be seen, but hopefully we can round him out into a good top six or middle six forward, and then fill up Mazar, who somehow ended up here on the Caps. Again, another more, another one of those more shoot first, ask questions later type of guy. He's listed as a playmaker, but he has a better shot category than Andrew Cristal. We're going to see, does this go through? I Maybe we don't move on from Mazar because Ryder Ritchie looks, no, Ryder Ritchie, He's more well-rounded, but I, 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 I think we, I think we move on from. No, no, you know what? We're gonna do this. We're gonna do this. We're gonna take our Richie. We're gonna go with this, and we're gonna add in a pick instead. Because I don't think there's a need to move out Richie for a older, uh, less talented forward. So here it is: Keandre Miller, Pierre Luc Dubois. Uh, I think it's Steve Zanetti. Yeah, Steve Zanetti, and the 31st overall pick for Aaron Kiviharju, Sasha Bumedian, Andrew Cristal, and the third-round pick, the 78th overall pick in this year's NHL draft. Does this go through? It does. Okay, so that is multiple big names off this team. We've gotten rid of Peyton Krebs. We've gotten rid, rid of uh, Brett Pesci. We've gotten rid of Philip Gustafson. We've gotten rid of Pierre-Luc Pierre Dubois. We've gotten rid of Jack Thompson. We've gotten rid of um, Keandre Miller. We've gotten rid of so many key pieces that got us to two of these these back-to-back -back conference finals. And you know why? because this team is still decent without them. And I know that seems insane, but look at our forwards. Appleby, Pruka, Hayden, Shabrikov. We're gonna be re-signing Besser because he's been stellar for us. Stankoven, uh, we, we're actually gonna be moving on from Noah Cates because I have him for, for four more years at 3.5 million. I don't, maybe we don't move on from him because of his defensive category. We'll see what happens. Uh, we have Connor Garland still. We're gonna be letting go of Michael Rasmussen, but look at this. Clark Caswell still with the team, and he's 82 now at 21. That's going to be a big bump up for us. Igor Sokolov did decent for us. We have Josiah Bahinsky, who was our 13th overall pick in last year's NHL entry draft. We have Konsta Helenius, who's ready. He's 21, 79 overall, but look at those individual attributes. They're ready for the NHL. We still have Nikonen and Perot. We still have Felice Robert and Maverick Bork and Dylan Duke and Max Swanson is another player we got to keep an eye on. Same with Ryder Ritchie. Our forward core is not weaker. It might seem weaker, but it's not weaker. Defensively, we still got Gerard and Benning. We still got Edmondson and Pelika. We now have Aaron Kiviharju and Leon Bichel. We're going to be moving on from Myers and Alexiak. Guys, we still have a solid team. And then goaltending, that's maybe where it's a little rocky with Raul and, and, and Augustine as our starters. But there may be someone available in free agency that we make a move for. And I think that's the way to go. I think we've made the moves now that we need to make. We have almost $34 million in cap space, if I'm not mistaken. This team's ready. And I did all that using the special, um, the special trick of going to the player stats screen on draft day before entering the NHL entry draft. 
and just going for trade for asset that's something i've always done it just helps gets trades done and gets you into the nhl draft ready to go and i think we are ready to go we have the first overall pick here i can't believe we made all those trades but it was time to change up who the butte bandits are and make them the team that we need them to be it's sad to see some of these players go everyone's upset to see brett pesci go i was upset to see him go same with keandre miller same with gustafson because i believe so strongly that gustafson would be our goalie uh, but it was time to go i'm not too i'm not too upset about losing pierre luc dubois i mean like he had 65 points this season but that contract was such an anchor for us but here we go the first overall pick now with your butte bandits oh and brandon montour is being shot by the red wings so if we want we can bring him back but i think that was it that's our moves now for this draft maybe some uh moving around to get a higher pick but let's see if we take a look at who's available we're not going to be taking Tarnstrom. Okay, I'm just not a big fan of that. Maybe Ali Stock, a left-wing sniper. But if you think about it, we have so many forwards. I think the place to bring someone in is on defense with Tyson Borodziak. Okay, I think he is the pick. Owen Hayes also looks good. He is a dual positional player. He's listed as NHL ready. Um, it's just his, his grades, uh, B, B minus A plus A, B minus BB. Doesn't look great, doesn't look great. Elliot Daniel also looks good. You know what? It might not be bad to bring in another franchise center here. A plus shooting, A puck skills, A plus senses, A minus physical, B in skating and defense. You know, maybe that's it. Brodziak looks good. He's listed as a two-way defender. Oh, a, A minus, A minus, A, A minus, B in defense. I don't like that he's got B in defense. He's NHL ready. Brent Burns comparable style. Oh, Brodziak looks good. Is there any... Give me a second here. Give me one second here. Okay, I have a plan in mind here. We are gonna make our pick with 30 seconds left on the clock. It's gonna be an off the board pick. You guys can freak out at me if you want. We are gonna take the defender Tyson Brodziak here though. Okay, I think he is the pick for us. Six foot four, left-handed defender, 203 pounds. He's a two-way defender, Brent Burns comparable style. I think this is the way to go from the, I believe it's the Finnish league. I believe he played in the Finnish league. Yes, from the Yip and the Finnish Liga. 19 points in 57 games at a minus four. That's not a good sign, but we do take Tyson Borodziak first overall. 79 medium elite. And his individual attributes are not bad. He's got decent skating, decent shot. His puck skills and senses could use some work. And his defensive uh, category will grow over time. He's only 18. But that's just the first move here. You guys could be freaking out thinking that's not the first overall pick. I shouldn't have done that. I have a plan in mind here. Second overall is Robert Tarnstrom, medium elite, 80 overall. Ali Stock, medium elite, 80 overall as well to the Pittsburgh Penguins here. Seattle takes Justice Chang, who's an 82 medium elite sniper. Yeah, he looks good. He looks good, but he's just another Dominic Pruka, and we don't need that. Fifth overall, the LA, King, LA Kings take Owen Hayes. He was another pick that I was looking at. Decent, decent. He's got great senses and great puck skills, and that defensive category is not too bad. He's got no shot. I know he's a playmaker, but he's got no shot and barely any physical category. And he's not as fast as I'd like him to be. So that's that. He's a good pick, but not the pick we're looking to make. Sixth overall, Nashville Predators take Davis Coop. And seventh overall, the Montreal Canadiens take Jacobson. Jackson Jacobson, 81 medium elite depth forward. He's listed as a playmaker, and his individual attributes are all over the place. 90 for offensive awareness. Super fast. Decent defensive category. He can slam shots but he can't really aim them he's a decent player here now eighth overall is coming up elliot daniel is slated to go eighth i want him badly we're gonna make a trade here okay the trade that i have stands as peter mahalik a first round pick the 19th overall pick in this year's draft that we got from the dallas stars and the second round pick from nashville well from pittsburgh that we got in the Philip Gustafson trade. So the ninth, so Phil, uh, Peter Mahalik, 19th and 38th overall pick or the eighth overall pick. And I, I, my justification for moving out from Peter Mahalik is yes, he's 78 at 19 years old. We just got Brodziak. This guy's got bumped down so far in the lineup. I think he needs some ice time. Will this go through? It might not. I might need to add another second round pick, but let's see, does it go through? It does, not too much to deliberate. I thought we'd have to overpay more for that but we do get the eighth overall pick here and now with three minutes to spare i don't need to take that time we're taking elliot daniel here from the barry colts for our center pick and look at that 78 overall medium elite sniper 
decent decent offensive awareness uh, pretty okay shot i mean he can slam the shot and he's got decent accuracy i wish he was a little better i wish his skating was better too um defensive category is not that bad puck skills isn't that bad again he's 18 he's not jumping into the nhl uh this year but those 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 superstar abilities are good elite edges make it make it snappy one t wheels and snipe that is a decent damn pick there at eighth overall i wish we could have wish he could have felt to ninth because that would have been great. I wouldn't have had to pay as much, but I still think we got two game-breaking players here in Brodziak and Daniel, plus all the trades we make we made earlier. This team is ready. We are good. We're going to sim here to the 34th pick and then look at where everybody fell in that first round. So after we picked 7th uh, or 8th overall, we took Daniel. It was McKamey 9th and Vasilevsky 10th. DuPont was medium elite at 11th. Pavel Laine was a uh, top six forward. Noah Stenlin, Stenlin was also medium elite, so maybe we could have gotten him. But I, 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 I stand by, I stand by my picks. I stand by my decisions here. Darren Baranowski, a 76 overall, uh, medium top four offensive defenseman. Okay, Gonchar, a medium elite. Oh, so Colorado got a bit of a steal here. Uh, Lindsay and Chan, both 77s. Yeah, there's some pretty decent players. Um, Elliot, two. Oh my gosh, look at this goalie. 72 overall, medium elite at 18 years old. Eric 2, sorry. Why did I immediately say Elliot 2? Eric 2. Eric 2, wow. Good pick there from the Chicago Blackhawks. And aside from that, nothing else really happened in that first round. We do have a few second round picks here, if I'm not mistaken. Not sure who I want to take. I want to be careful here. And you know, Benjamin DeVoe has that gem status. I think that's who we take. Benjamin DeVoe. 34th overall, medium top four, 66 overall. That's not too bad. We're going to jump to 64th, and I believe... Oh, you know what? No, I'm not, I'm not going to trade him from 4th to 6th. We do have one of the second, uh, last second round picks in the second round. Um, I don't see anyone really standing out. Simon Lacroix, Ladislav Hosha. Uh, no, I think he's going to I think he's gonna be a medium 9. Uh, Caden Guerin. No, that's not accurate. It's not accurate. Uh, Peter Skratskins, no. Um, Emelin, Boris Emelin, five years out. Russ Winkler, medium, or he's probably a medium elite. He's possibly a medium elite, but he's listed as a gem. He's got the attributes. He's got um, uh, NHL ETA of five years, which is usually what you'd expect with a gem or a medium elite player. Sorry, I'm, I'm a little stumble i made a lot of trades here i'm stumbling over my words we're gonna pick russ winkler here with the 64th overall pick and he is a medium elite 47 overall so add him to Rousseau, and we're pretty damn good i wish i could have gotten that uh, that goalie from the chicago blackhawks or instead of the chicago blackhawks getting him i think we did pretty good i think we did pretty good we're gonna jump to 78th overall here um garen goes i don't think there was anyone uh, runsfeld was a low top six okay i thought that was medium for a second yeah nobody nobody that we really missed on there we still have a, uh, ability to pick some good players. Hopefully, I think Jonathan Cornet is going to be always oh, he's two years out. I think he's a low top six. I think he's a low top six, but we're going to take him. Jonathan Cornet. Yeah, he's a low top six, 66 overall. So that's pretty much the same as a Maxwell Ellison. Um, here, just two picks later, we're ready to go again. I'm going to sort by potential and we're going to take Ladislav Hosov here because he's the only one who looks decent. He's a medium top six. Okay, so that's not bad. That's not too bad at all. We're going to jump to the 94th pick here. Uh, I don't think we're going to see... Oh, Murray. Didn't see him. Trevor Murray, 56 overall, medium elite. So he's better than the goalie we even got. He had five shutouts this season. That's unfortunate. That's unfortunate, but I still stand by my picks. I still stand by my picks. I think we've gotten some decent players here. We're going to continue to look at who's available. Uh, Boris Emelin, you know what? He might be he might be a medium elite he might be it might be good to add another player uh we're gonna take some uh low elites here though Malmavara looks decent but i think he's a low top six i'm gonna take him though i knew Malmavara because the other two will be available still he is a low top six that's unfortunate jump to the 97th pick here clack what was klaxon medium elite center playmate center power forward oh my gosh jamal klaxon I didn't see that. I I don't think I don't think he was listed as as good. I man, that's that's unfortunate. There is George Bossois here. I don't think he's going to be great. Brandon Mathers, not not thinking that much. Miko Yakala. I'm going to take Miko Yakala here. If he's good, he's good. If he's not, you know what? 
I don't see anyone else that we could use a pick on. Medium top nine. That's not too bad. That's not too bad. We're going to jump to the 118th pick here. Uh, I don't see any elite player. Oh, there we go. Parent, who is another goalie to the Chicago Blackhawks. They pick up Parent and then medium top six forward Walsh. So the Blackhawks are drafting much better than we are. Um, in the end of the third round there, I don't think there was really any picks after us. No, it's just Sonnenberg and Bonanen. So we're going to take those low elite players, the guaranteed low elite players. Actually, you know what? Let's just do it. Let's take Boris Emelin. He's going to be uh, probably a medium starter, but we're going we're gonna to jump off the board here and take Boris Emelin. And he was a medium elite, 48 overall. So we didn't get one of the better medium elite goalies, but we got some decent uh, goalies here. I, I don't want to be as fast with these drafts as I have been. I want to take some more time. I really want to get better at drafting. I used to be a star at it. Um, but I think we're doing pretty good in this draft. We're going to take uh, Nick Gallant here. I think he's a he's a low elite gem, and so is Victor McNeil. So we're going to take Gallant here and then McNeil with our next pick. And then that'll probably round out this draft for us here. Oh, McNeil goes. Oh, man, I didn't even see. Ah, so McNeil goes one pick early. One pick early to the Ottawa Senators. I wish we could have gotten him too. That would have been great. There's Nikolai Nikitin here. I think he's going to be a seventh defender. I don't know of another player here. I'm going to take Theo Riddle. Shoot me if I'm wrong. I'm going to take Theo Riddle. It's just my quick pick here. He's a low bottom six. I was hoping that that low potential might have meant that he was uh, possibly a low elite. I don't think there's another low elite in this draft, though. I think McNeil was possibly the last one. Hopefully, he was the last one, and then I won't, I won't feel as bad. Nikitin was a medium seventh. Uh, Peterson, medium fringe starter. Weeks, bottom six. Yeah, I don't think there was... I don't think... Dimitra, a medium starter in the seventh round. That's pretty good, but that's going to round it out here for this draft. And look at it. Borodziak, Daniel, DeVoe. Winkler isn't even bad. Cornette was a bit of a miss. So was Hosa. Malavara as well, but then um, uh, Emelin was a pretty good pick. You know, we didn't do too bad. We didn't do too bad. We probably added like three, four uh, confirmed NHL players. At least two. At least two NHL uh, players for us. But that's that's not too bad. That's not too bad. That is going to wrap it up here, though. We're going to do the re-sign and free agency in the next video. We're going to see what everyone wants. I'll get all the uh, coaches' contracts offered um, in between videos here. We do have to re-sign Brock Besser. Uh, Michael Rasmussen also needs a new contract extension. He doesn't want to come back. So does Simon Evanson. So there's some big names here. I'm letting go of all the veterans. That's 100% guaranteed that players like Carrier, Lawton, Myers, Coleman, Alexiak, even Trennan is going to go. Ball might come back. Dermot might come back for the AHL. We'll see what happens with this team in between videos, though. Thank you guys so much for joining me. I know this has been a bit of a topsy-turvy video, and I might have lost a bit of viewership on this one. Because you know what? I traded away some key pieces, but I think this team is ready. And as a quick note, we will be transitioning this series to what I call an SF series. So a short format series. We'll be going through more simulating per video, but we're not going to be taking as long in the videos. They're probably going to be around 12 to 20 minutes long compared to the 20 to 40 minutes long the videos have been. So little bite-sized things. We're going to get the same amount of simulation, the same amount of work done per video. They're just going to be shorter and we're not going to be going through game by game, but more uh, in, in a 10 game span. That's going to be how things are changing for this series. Just because I do want to start getting through it. We're 20 parts into it now. We're we're on the verge of greatness, but I think we just got to pull this team together. I'm also probably making a coaching change in between uh, videos, uh, episodes here. I just want to, I want to change this team up. I want, I want them to be ready for next season. I think you, you can't blame me if after four seasons, this team still isn't doing great. And we've lost twice in the conference finals with Rocky goaltending. I'm going to be making a lot more changes still. We're also going to see who else is possibly going to be available in free agency to add as that big piece. And if we add a big piece, you know what? I'm sending somebody out the door. It's just as simple as that. It, especially if Kale McCarr and Cutter Gauthier are available. We're going to be moving out major players if we can get Kale McCarr and Cutter Gauthier, even a Dylan Genther. We might, we, we're probably not done guys. We're probably not done, but we are done for this video. Thank you guys so much for joining me. I'm sorry if I've been stumbling and stuttering. I'm just, ah, you know what? I'm going to be honest. I haven't had caffeine in like two days. My brain is it's not working okay i'm trying to do this like healthy kick i'm drinking water i'm eating home cooked meals i had a steak and potatoes last night if anybody cares it was really delicious i even had some fried onions on top but i i'm so brain zapped it's scary 
Hopefully I made some good moves. If you guys have any problems with the moves that I made, let me know in the comments. Call me out. Say, I don't think this is a player I should have moved. You're probably right. We'll see. But thank you guys so much for joining me. This has been a better episode. Not a blast, but a better episode. You guys have all been awesome. The support you've given me is amazing. I check my YouTube studio every freaking 10, 15 minutes because it's it's changing. Every uh, I can't believe it. You guys are awesome. You guys are awesome. You guys are awesome. I'll say it a thousand times. I'll, I'll do. You guys want a video where I just say you guys are awesome for 15 minutes? 15 minutes? I'll do it. I'll do it. But thank you guys. You're all amazing and perfect. And I hope you're having a great day. And I hope uh, you enjoyed this video. And I'll see you guys in the next one.